Hey guys, how's it going? This is Rage, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a new series, and this is going to be called Games from My Childhood. And the idea behind this series is it's going to be a bunch of old games that I used to play all the time when I was a kid and really influenced me as a gamer. So right now, I'm just going to do a little bit of Lord of the Rings, because I hinted towards doing this game at one point, but, uh, you know, let's just go a little game here. I, I was playing this a little bit earlier, and as you can tell, tell I got 70... Ugh. 7% in. I beat the first level here, Helm's Deep, which is kind of annoying, and I can either do Path of the Dead, The Road to Isengard, or Escape from Osgoliath, however that's pronounced. But as you guys can tell, I, I, I'm i not that big of a Lord of the Rings fan. I love Lord of the Rings. It's, like, it's a great show. A movie, goddamn. But I can't remember. I think this one was Merry and Pippin with the uh, Ents heading to um, Isengard, I think, where Saruman was. This one, oh god, this, this one here was three main characters, Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and then Sam and Frodo when they meet up with Boromir's brother, oh, Fort, uh, Faramir? Yeah, I think it was Faramir. Really cool guy. But anyways, we're just gonna jump right in here on the Path of the Dead. Uh, you know what, there's plenty of characters you can pick from. You gotta pick Aragorn, you pick Legolas, you can pick Gimli, Gandalf, Sand, Frodo, Mary, Pippin. I think that's Faramir. I don't think it's Boromir, because I know people didn't like Boromir too much. And to be honest, as a Lord Rings fan, I wasn't a big fan of Boromir either. But I think I'm going to have to cut here. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut. Shit. <laughs> Alright, I apologize for the cut there. As you guys probably know, if any of you guys played this when you were younger as well, this came out in 2003. Oh, I was like 8 or 9 years old when I played this. But anyways, when this game came out... This was around the exact same time, or not the same time of the movie, but shortly after the movie, we started winning awards and whatnot, and they had rights to use a lot of the uh, movie scenes and clips from the movie in their game. And to be honest, that was a great idea because the game really follows the storyline of the movies accurately, in, well, as accurate as you can get, because I don't think all this really happened, because in the movies, they don't really make them dead. They don't really fight the ghosts, but either way, it kind of adds for a little bit broader horizon for the game, and it just, it was kind of nice to have a game that followed accurately enough to the movies, yet had actual movie clips inside of it, so it was, it was quite the uh, thing of its time, like, it wasn't massive, I guess, but it was, it was pretty cool and for a kind of a beat em up hack and slash game like this it was unique and I cannot express how many movie games I've played that really don't follow too accurately to the game itself or the movie I'm sorry and another game that <laughs> probably was the worst perpetrator for this was probably the Fantastic Four game that they made that game was terrible. It did not even follow the movies at all. And then I think there was like the Spider-Man movies, not the f not the first one, like with Tobey Maguire. It was that one, but it wasn't the first game. It was the second game that they made was good. But I know in the first game that they made, it was kind of shitty, and everybody thought, "Oh, hey, this is released about the exact same time that the uh, the movies were, so maybe this will follow the same kind of accurate plotline." Nope, totally different thing. Had, I, I guess I was disappointed as a kid because I was expecting something to fall along the lines of the movie. And when you do make a game based off the movie, you want a game that's going to be accurate to the movie and something that has that immersion that, hey, look, it was in a movie and it was cool. Now you get to do that yourself. Hell yeah. Of course I want to fucking do that. But instead it was like its own kind of like fan fiction idea story that was written. That might have followed the comics very loosely, but that's just for that game in particular, right? I'm pretty sure... Oh, wait, no, this is not the way I want to go just yet. Neat little trick up here, but, you know, I don't know why I'm trying to get this point across, because, let's be honest, this game's a little dated. Use your fellowship upgrades. All right, well, I can't really do that right now, so... I can't even tell where I am. I kind of hate this camera angle. And I think I'm going to die here. Oh god, sorry, I was like, 
utterly focused there. It was like I was ow, damn it, dude. Seriously. I was channeling like my inner child where it was like super focused, super pro. Really great at this game. I only got two. Wow. Or no, I think that was three. I can't tell. When I was when I used to play this game with my buddies when I was younger, I used to be so good at this game and me and my friends, we used to always fight over Legolas because let's be honest, it's pretty badass having two swords that you can just kick living hell out of people with. And then you can pull out your bow and arrow and just be like, pachoo, 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 look at me, I'm even more badass than I was before. And as more realistic as Gimli was in the movie, his character just kind of, it didn't, ow, damn it, Ugh. it just didn't hit home for me. I wasn't a fan of Gimli. I'm pretty sure there's some people out there like, oh, Gimli's an awesome guy, man. He uses, like, battle axes and kicks the shit out of people. If anybody, it was either Legolas or Aragorn. And Aragorn, oh, man, he was, he was cool. I, I loved him in the movies. Ow, dude, oh, God, stop it. This is not even fair. What difficulty is this on? Like, easy, hard? This is probably on hard. It's got to be on hard, dude. I was, like, great at this game when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm better than this. Trust me. All right, come on, kill him. Oh, no, oh, shit, kill him. Yeah, I kind of figured I'd do this game because the Lord of the Rings franchise was just, like, amazing for me when I was a kid. I was huge in the Lord of the Rings movies and the lore. I can't say I've been a massive Lord of the Rings fan. Like, I'm not one of those people that I've read all the books and I know all the characters' names and all the languages that the elves speak and the dwarves and whatnot. I know that there was like 20 rings and one of them was made by uh, Sauron to kind of control all the other ones that were supposed to be better and all that stuff. So I understand the storylines. So when I was a kid, I always grew up. I liked it. I enjoyed Lord of the Rings. And I actually spent one New Year's Eve with my friends watching the extended version of Lord of the Rings one night. No problem at all. But that's not what I'm trying to get at here. What I'm trying to get at is I'm, I've been a Lord of the Rings fan. So, I kind of figured, I've always liked the games except for the first one. The first one was terrible. And I kind of thought, I thought, not thought, I kind of thought the most accurate game to depict my love for this would be this game here. Because this game, I, God, I played it with so many friends. And I didn't even just like play it on Xbox. I went over to my one buddy's house and he had a GameCube and we'd play all night on his GameCube and then... I'd go home, my one buddy would come over, and the next weekend we'd play this at my house, and then there was the one weekend we'd go over to his house, and he always had the big screen TV, and he had the, uh, um, the home theater system set up and everything like that, and great TV, oh god, it was just prime for playing games on, we'd just stay up all night as long as we could before his parents woke up and were like, what are you doing? You should be asleep, you're like 10 years old, you should be at 5 in the morning playing video games, but... We kind of did anyways, and, you know, not saying we were some kind of, like, hoodlum rebels because we were 10 years old playing video games. Ooh, man, we really got arrested doing that one. But just the fact that there was so much, like, memories in this game that I felt this was one of the games that really influenced me to become a gamer, and if not for this game and all the countless great memories I've had, as you can tell, with this game... I really wouldn't be the gaming fan I am right now. And trust me, I'm I'm a gamer. I wouldn't say I have to go out and buy every game and play every game because I'm one of those people where I can sit down, and I can I can watch somebody play a game. I don't have to play it for myself, but I'd like to. You know, I can sit there and I can watch you play a game and I can enjoy watching you play because that's just how I grew up with my sister. We had an N64 and a lot of the games we had at the time were one-player games. And if any of you guys know, Super Mario 64 was not a multiplayer game. They, there was probably a ROM that somebody created or released, like a hack that would allow you to play multiplayer. I think you can do that with Project 64. But originally, the game was a single-player game, and you watched it or you played it. And my sister, as much as she loved playing games, she enjoyed playing games, and I didn't mind watching. So. I remember watching her beat that whole game and kind of leaving through the vicarious feeling of, hey, I've beat Super Mario 64. I've beaten it before, but I've never really, like, 
beaten it as numerous times as she has and knowing like all the different like, cool tricks you can do and all the crazy shit you can do like what's a slide in one levels you could like ride down it and just kick the wall I think it was and you can like miss half the slide and beat like a time record it's kind of cool but I can never do it so I've I've never been really great at games but I've never been bad either I've been kind of just person that enjoys gaming a little bit doesn't pride himself off being like the best gamer ever and just enjoys watching it and seeing how good people can be at games probably not to the level where I can sit there and watch super competitive play but oh can I oh god that like oh critical hit oh yeah oh man I think the first time I recorded this I stopped right here because I didn't realize how many cinematics there was gonna be between the first level and this one and I had like a 30 minute footage of me getting to that point just dying and I was like well shit so I did it there but yeah this is this is a little bit blind for me right now Ow, God, stop it stop it guys you're such assholes but no this is a little bit blind for me right now because you know I haven't played this game since I was like maybe 13, 14 for nostalgia's sake but other than that I'm not really looking for anything to make like a series out of. I'm just playing this for fun and really show you guys the cool things about it. Some of the awesome games I enjoyed. And I really hope. Oh my god, where do I have to go? Get out, get out of the way! God damn it, you fat ass. There's gotta be like a beaten path right here somewhere that I haven't noticed yet. Hang on. Hang on, we're gonna find a path here in a second. We're gonna find a path here in a second. That's one of my major complaints with this game, though, is the camera angles. Camera angle is shit. Okay, well, it's obviously not that way. Uh, wait, wait, maybe it is that way. Get out of the way, Gimli. God damn. Seriously, bro. Ah, it is this way. All right, I remember this. Gotta go under here. You get under here, you start pulling the thing, and it's like, booga, booga, booga. Enemies right behind you. Oh, God, kill them all. Okay, I, I think the main I guess objective behind this right now oh I got a perfect sweet I'm so good at this game it's okay my combos over though you can probably hear me mashing the right bumper and that was my one of the really annoying things about playing an Xbox game on your 360 is probably a how kind of shitty the camera looks or not the camera the the way the screens formatted you guys probably won't notice because I'm going to try my best to kind of zoom this in a little bit without sacrificing quality sake. But at the same time, it's just, ugh, it's not even, it doesn't even format it to your TV. And I do have a widescreen TV. This does allow for HD. And it just doesn't format properly. I'm really hoping I'm not getting up to the boss fight because if I am, it's going to be another cinematic cutscene. Okay, it's at the end of this bridge. I remember this that part. I remember this. This, this is, is kind of cool. Oh, I can use this. I can use analog stick to attack. Oh, cool. Yeah, I thought this this scene was really cool. Had a lot of depth put behind it with the background. It's probably a lot of like images just copy pasted, the same animation over and over. But let's be honest, there was probably a lot more put into this like, thought wise. For a game like this, like this caliber. And I'm not saying that, like, this is going to be, like, the next gen game of its time. It was massive, because let's be honest, after this game, I kind of, I don't know. The Lord of the Rings games kind of went downhill for a little while. They released a really awesome one recently. Like, I think it was like a Battle for Middle Earth, I think is what it was called. I don't remember. But there was these ones here. It was There was the Fellowship of the Ring one, which kind of sucked out. I hated it. And then there was the Two Towers and uh, Return of the King, which again was a hack and slash beat em up game, the two of them. The first one was really like RPG esque. And then after that, they released one, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it was Lord of the Rings, it wasn't Conquest. It was like an action RPG style game. And by action RPG, I mean like it was very RPG. <laughs> I'll try and figure out the name and like put in like an annotation of the name of the game or something like that. But all I remember is I didn't like it. Maybe I've just never been too 100% partial to RPG games because I never really played much of a system that really had great RPG games on it. Like 
the Xbox. I think the greatest RPG game that really did come out of Xbox was maybe Fable. And I never really played Fable because I never really knew RPGs. So, then again, like, was there any N64 games that did have RPG style games on it? Because I really. I found N64 was very one of my. I guess, unique systems that I grew up with other than the Xbox. Hmm. I don't know. I never had an NES or Super NES, so I can probably be exempted from like, games like Final Fantasy. I think it was 3, or in the series it would have been 6, but it was released as 3. And then there was Super Mario RPG, which apparently was actually really good, but didn't get the opportunity to play that one either. People would go, go get a ROM, go download a ROM. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I struggle with ROMs. I think I'm going to have to edit this in a second. Hang on. Let's find out here. Boss fight. Yeah, right here. This is one it, it goes cinematic. Alright, well that's that. As you can see, I racked up some kills here. And I'm pretty sure I had like one perfect in there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, one perfect. And then, mission rating, good. <laughs> Fuck you, then, game. I thought it a little bit better than good. But I have 24,000 experience to work with. The one thing I liked about this game is you leveled up, but as you can tell by the customizable stuff, I did purchase Orc Hewer. But if you look, there's either Orc Bane, which is for yourself, or you can buy it for everybody. And by everybody, I mean you get it for all the main characters, you get it for all the hobbits, and you get it for Gandalf as well. As it clearly depicts with Sam there instead of Frodo, because I don't think you get to play Frodo as much. Or if you do, I, I wouldn't pick Frodo. Frodo's a bitch. Sam's where it's at. Uh, what is this? Ooh. I, I, I'm kind of tempted to get that. Now, you know what? Let's, I'm just going to get what's going to be beneficial. Ooh, look at that. Holy shit. I'm going to get beneficial to this boss fight right now. Okay, let's go with this. Let's go with that. And increase damage and get to perfect mode more quickly with special ability. That's how you do it. Oh. Okay, so you got to be level 3 to un uh, like unlock that. A, B, R. Wound, kick down, and finish with powerful strength. Do I have enough for it? Yeah. Alright. Let's do this. Do you want to save your game? Yeah. I'm going to save this really quick, and then we're going to get into the boss fight, which will kind of draw conclusions to what I want to prove with this game, how fun it is, and how kind of... Not how stereotypical this game is, where you'd expect, okay, well, here's a level. Here is a level you pay through, and here's a boss at the end. I feel some games suffer from that, and I think the worst game I've played lately that was really like that... Oh, is this another cinematic? No, it's not. Alright, sweet. Do I play as Aircorn here? Dude, the other two just got trapped off. What the hell? He's level one. I don't want to play as him. Who enters my... Who enters your domain? I certainly enter your goddamn domain. So why they don't animate them out. This game would have been so much better if they animated them out. Where is he going? Oh, am I alone? Okay, uh, this guy, if I remember, it's like all about patterns. Okay, swing, swing. Oh, and then he's gonna disappear. Where is he gonna go? He's gonna go over there. Can't hit him from here, alright. Now if I remember, yeah, okay, I remember this correctly. He summons up his own little undead army to come kill me because he's too much of a coward to do it himself. So he'll go take off somewhere and he'll send after his. or send after, send forth his little army of ghost bitches here. And they'll be like, dude, I'm gonna kill you because you're an elf and we don't like elves. Oh, 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 oh. Get away from that. Okay. Okay. Now I remember. Hit, hit, hit. Okay. I guess he only hit three times. It's just so deceiving because he he walks differently or he like his patterns are a little weird. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but it looks like he's moving slightly differently. So I feel like he's gonna attack me in some way. But oh, did I get those arrow upgrades? 
Ow, what the hell? Oh, there's people over there too? To me, fellow warriors. Wow, I pulled out those swords pretty fast to protect myself from... Oh, get out of the way! Okay, he's gonna swing, what, three times? Yeah. Oh, dude, that hit him pretty hard. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, I keep feeling like he's gonna hit me like a fourth time or something like that. One. Oh, he's pretty angry. Now I think he's gonna start hitting me like four times. Okay, that's kind of scary. This is why I can understand why this game was rated T for Teen. Oh, okay. And then, as you can tell, the nice thing about these boss fights is it kind of like shows you what he's going to do. So you know, okay, well, he's about to unleash hell in like a sandstorm, and you've got to hide behind these rocks. Whereas in some games, they won't really tell you that. They pride themselves off that whole idea of trial and error. So it's like you have to die a few times to find out. And then from there, it's just a total pain in the ass. I hate games that do that. And it makes sense at times. Like, some games I can see it in. Like, Skyrim. It makes sense where you kind of got to learn from your own mistakes. But in others, I just don't like it. It's like, here you go. No, no, Skyrim was probably a really bad example of that. A game I was thinking was Shank 2. And that was the one game I really wanted to talk about before going into that cutscene there. God damn it, guys, this is not a gangbang, okay? Does that regenerate my health at all? It, I think it does. If it does, that's going to help me out a lot. Oh, oh sorry, I feel so focused right now. Because this guy's probably going to kill me. Oh, God. I don't need to get off that last Y. Where is he going? You coward. But yeah, no. Shank 2 was one of those games where I really... Like, it, it wasn't that bad of a game. It was fun, but it was hard. And my major complaint with it is the fact that it prides itself off of here's a checkpoint every five seconds, but have fun trying to die to a boss every five seconds. Like, you walk into an area and you run into... A very difficult boss and you are kind of set into this position where you got to learn not to rush in and like take it on the boss my major complaint is the difficulty in the game is just so frustratingly hard that it, like it really disciplines you for oh god can I yeah okay I can just spam a against this guy on late attack but it really disciplines you for like doing that little bit extra or trying to learn it's like here you go you want to kill this boss you got to sit here and observe his playstyle for a while and figure out he's going to attack you and in the meantime you got to die three times and lose all your points pretty much like if you want the points which they give you and it's like after so many points you can unlock this and this right you get cool upgrades it just feels like after a while is he going to just keep attacking like that oh god oh god Oh god, I feel so focused right now. Oh dude, I'm rocking this. I'm rocking this. I'm totally rocking this guy right now. I feel like I need some like beastie boys going on with that. Like body moving, body moving, ain't no sound. Like it sounds so soothing. That would be like prime right now. I'd kill for some beastie boy music. Oh no. Okay. Uh, uh, no, this is so hard. What is this game? Yeah, I think these guys are affected by, like, heavy attacks, but again, it's like that Bruiser-style enemy that they do a ton of damage if you get hit. But that's, like, another thing I wanted to, like, draw for. It's, like, with Shank 2, it's one of those games where it gives you numerous checkpoints, but health is few and far between in that game. So you run into, like, a Bruiser-style enemy, and you die to him trying to kill him, getting to the boss. And it's like, alright, well he's kind of hard, you gotta learn his techniques. And then once you learn how he fights, you finally get out of there with like minimal health, because you just got attacked with like a plethora of enemies. And I'm, I'm talking like a plethora of enemies, because Shank has this bad tendency of like, here, we're gonna throw you in a gangbang, have fun. Well, that's not what I signed up for, but okay, didn't expect that. I don't know, like, 
The differences between Shank 1 and Shank 2 I felt were just so unnecessary. And I really haven't gotten quite across the point that I wanted to that the bosses are hard. And unlike so many games out there, games will do that whole idea of here's a boss just to summarize that this is the end of a segment or just the end of a level. In Shank 1, they do it just perfectly because... Here, okay, I'm going to put it this way. Spoiler alert, if you guys haven't played Shank 1 right now, go play it. I'm going to reveal the plot of the first game. And don't get mad, that game's been out for a while. But anyways. Oh, shit, 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 oh, Okay, that could have been bad. The idea behind Shank in the first one is this guy comes in your house, you're a bounty hunter, and this guy, or bounty hunter mercenary kind of thing, this guy finds out who you are, and... He goes and kidnaps your wife. And they kidnap your wife, and then you're pretty much out trying to get to this guy. And amongst the kidnapping, you discover that there were three other people that were involved in the kidnapping of your wife. And in finding this out, you seek trying to find her, yet they don't really tell you where she is. So you got to go and find all these, like, henchmen of his, and when I say henchmen, I mean like super badass guys that were involved with him. Like there's one that's like a butcher, there's one that's like some crazy ass badass, but either way, it's this whole like, there's reasoning behind the bosses that you fight, and I felt with Shank too, there wasn't any reasoning at all behind any of the bosses, and I feel kind of bad that I'm talking about Shank in the middle of a Lord of the Rings kind of video. And it's just... I bring that up because in some games they do that. Like this one here, this one makes sense. This guy, you gotta defeat him to get him on your side, which obviously didn't happen in the movie. Like, I don't ever remember Eric Warren ever fighting with this guy. Maybe for his, like, honor? Who knows? But in a sense, some boss fights are necessary, others very unnecessary, and they don't involve the plot at all. So, I might be drawn to the conclusion here because I think I just killed the boss. I don't think there's much after this. Maybe there's an escape scene. I really hope not. If there is, then... Yeah, I think... Yeah, there's an escape scene. So, maybe this will be, like, an in-between level that I can stop. Nope, I gotta play through this. Shit. Alright, this is gonna be a hell of a long video. Why am I not running? Oh my god! Run, like us. Don't be a bitch! Look, even the ghosts are running. They're undead and they want to get the fuck out. That, that makes no sense. They're... They're, they're dead. Oh, they're not undead, they're dead. Why the hell are they trying to run? It's not like they're gonna die. Oh god, Rock, get out of my way, dude! Get out of my way! Oh man, playing this with like two players, this level was a bitch, from what I remember. Because like, if one friend would just stop to scratch his ass for a second, you were screwed. Because like, he was too slow, or the camera angle couldn't keep up with both of you. And I don't know, I feel it's really cheap when a game kills you off because the camera angle... And where are my loyal little followers? Did they like dish? Did they jump ship without me? I really hope they did. Oh my god, what is this? What is this? Okay, attack! Attack everything! Holy shit, where are you all coming from? Why is it spawning them all right here, right now, right against me? This is ridiculous. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, I can shoot arrows too, asshole. That wasn't, that was kind of ridiculous. Okay. Back to running. This level seems very generic. Run, kill, run, kill, run. Very well thought out. Very poor choices. I guess maybe the fact that you're rerunning through the level, like the backtracking portion, makes sense. Like some games, I, I don't like backtracking in. And that's why there's like games I won't play. AKA Metroid. Don't get me wrong, Metroid is a great game. I did play... Uh, what was it? Metroid Prime, I think it was, on the Game Boy Advance, but the problem with it was backtracking. I don't like backtracking at all, and that's all that game is about. Is like, hey, look, you just got this weapon from killing this boss, and you just unlocked this area. Have fun backtracking again. Even games like Dark Souls are like that as well, and it doesn't take away from the value of the game, but it just turns me off. Like, I don't like a game where I have to run through the entire level all over again just because 
here's something that you unlocked over here. This one here. This one kind of makes sense of the backpack because it's like the place is falling apart. So let ha let's head out the way we came. Eh. Kind of makes sense. Where did you come from? You know what? I'm just going to combo the shit out of you in the corner. You are going to die and you're going to resent it. A, B, R? Oh, no. It doesn't work on the big guys. It doesn't work on the big guys, but I did unlock it. Oh, the place is falling apart again. Better run. Better run. I don't know. There, it's a lot of aspects in video games are very debatable, and I'd much rather not get into like all of them right now because I could get my two cents on everything. And there's, oh, what the hell? There's certainly going to be people like, oh well, I think you're wrong because of this and this. Well, that's your opinion. That's this is my opinion. I'm not going to tell your opinion. It's stupid. Because you do have recent. Oh, now you guys are here. Now you give a shit. I don't care about you guys anymore. You left me for dead. Holy shit. Oh my god. Everything like spawned in. Alright. Okay. Well, um, let's just like brawl the shit out of these guys and let's hope we don't die anytime soon. And holy shit, I'm gonna die. I just got like a ton of companions and I'm dying already. Oh, oh god. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. This will take away from the credibility of the video if I die. No! Shit. Damn it. Fuck. Alright, well, that's Lord of the Rings Return of the King in a nutshell of three videos i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you guys like this series that i'm planning on doing i'm going to be planning on doing a lot more behind it and by behind it i mean like i'm planning on getting a composite splitter or not really a composite splitter more of like an av splitter kind of thing if you know what i mean it's like component splitter there we go and it allows me to record n64 and gamecube games with my hop hog HD PVR and the reason why I plan on doing that is the N64 was my childhood that was a lot of what base what I played and I'd love to share that with you guys I think it would be a great experience to play a lot of my GameCube and N64 stuff at the same time working on Xbox 360 stuff as well maybe a little bit of PC stuff depending on how my rig works and what games come out but I can guarantee you right now BitTrip Runner 2 is going to be for sure on my channel there's no doubt about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time.